It's the gear tester here, and what follows is some everyday use of the Grand Forks Brooks Small Forest Axe. I've had this tool for the better part of a month and a half, and I've used it a considerable amount both for personal use and for my second job. I have a second job where I work part of three days a week doing landscaping and snow removal. And I've been using, uh, carrying this Grand Forks Brooks Small Forest Axe with me uh, regularly, every day, uh, for the portions of those days that I've been working. And it's come in handy uh, for a number of different reasons. The snow is heavy on the pine trees and the branches are breaking off of those trees and so we might be doing snow removal or we might be doing landscaping as the snow kind of melts away for a day or two and then comes back. And I've been able to just cut branches and throw them into the back of our trucks and remove those branches from the properties that we're working on and not having to have the chainsaw and other tools around has made that very useful. We've been able to have other materials in the trucks and this is my personal tool and I've just really enjoyed using it. And uh, its overall length makes it really compact and yet you can get a double handed grip on it when you need to. And uh, what follows is just some everyday use of mine. Uh, using this uh, Grand Forest Brook Small Forest Axe to uh, chop away some uh, knobs that are on a log which I've transported to my home. I'm going to be using for uh, strength training uh, and for uh, personal endurance training. So what follows is just some everyday use of the Grand Forest Brook Small Forest Axe. I'm going to include uh, some safety considerations here in this video. So what I'm trying to do here is remove this section of the log, this kind of knot portion. This is a pretty long log and I'm trying to see what I'm going to end up actually doing with it. But I'm just trying to knock off these knots, these protruding knots, which are the result of where the limbs came out of this tree. You can see there, here's the axe head. This is a pretty good knot. And this piece of wood has been drying out for the better part of a, a month and a half. So this is dry wood now. Uh, but it's going to give a great workout for the Grand Forest Brook Small Forest Axe here. One of the things you want to be careful, and I'm sure I may have already said this or will say this again, but with an axe that's just got the short handle of this small forest axe, it's very easy to, if you're standing up, drive this thing into your knee uh, or groin, depending on how tall you are, how long your, your arms are. So you're going to want to kneel down, get your knees down, so if you do that, the head of the axe goes in the ground. That's not a great thing to have happen, but that's a lot better result. You can sharpen the axe head trying to get a new kneecap, whether you're in the woods or just chopping in your backyard. Um, I'd much rather be sharpening my axe, so let's get started here. In this case, I'm not kneeling down, but I'm cutting this way. My body's over here, so I'm doing a good job of missing my legs. It's times like this that it would be nice to have a little bit longer handle, but it's really nice to have the long longer handle of this small forest axe as compared to a hatchet. So you can always have a longer handle. The packability though of this small Grand Forest Brooks small forest axe is really nice. The wedge popped out there.
I'm tired. Keep in mind that I've already been doing a bit of chopping today. And that I'm trying to maximize the amount of material that's left on the log. This thing came very sharp. It was impressed with the sharpness of this uh, hatchet, small axe, super hatchet. Um, one of the things uh, that's known that Grant Woods Brooks is known for is producing sharp tools from the factory. Uh, it's not the end of the world. If you don't have a sharp tool though, from the factory. And it's not the end of the world for two reasons. The first of which is if you're gonna use it, it's gonna get dull over time and you're gonna need to know how to maintain it anyway. If you're not gonna use it, it doesn't matter. If it's just gonna be something you're gonna show to your friends that you're gonna hang on your wall, it doesn't matter necessarily how sharp it is because you're not using it for its intended purpose. It's more of a conversation piece. So that's one thing to think about. If it comes dull to you, that's okay. It's a great time to, to learn how to sharpen that axe head. Grand Force Brooks produces a number of sharpening tools that will help you do that and will allow you to learn. So they've even got some information about sharpening on their website. So that's very helpful and it's no reason to freak out if your tool doesn't come super sharp from the factory. I think it should come super, super sharp from the factory, but it's not the end of the world. Let's screw this up a little bit. You can see here I'm using this thing. You probably actually can't see because I'm zoomed in a little bit too much, but right now I'm using one hand. And that's one of the things I really like about the size and weight ratio of this tool. It's got a, a short handle and a light head for an axe. But that means that you can still use it one-handed. That's awful nice. As you get tired, as you do more work, it's awful nice to be able to just switch to one hand back and forth. You can see here, I'm employing a little bit different method. I'm crouching down on the log. I don't know if you can see that. My knee's right here. I'm crouching down and I'm keeping the log between me, my body, and the blade. So if I slip here, it's not a problem because the blade will either go into the ground or deeper into the wood. And that's a, another way that you can employ safety for your soft, fine, and important flesh so you don't hurt yourself when you're working with what is a very sharp tool and what should be maintained as a very sharp tool. You can see here, I'm being able to work. I really like the handle length on this tool, it is, it's awesome. Because I can use the two hands when I want. I can use the one hand when I need to or when I'm tired. And when the situation dictates that. And I still maintain a very lightweight and compact tool. And I think probably in, depending on the situation you're gonna be in, whether that's a forest, um, or a lightly wooded area, you know, a hatchet isn't going to be, a, or an axe isn't going to be very useful to you in a desert or in a situation where there aren't trees to cut to make into shelter to make tools. But in many situations, I think you'd be better served by something like this and a folding knife than you would be like this, for instance. This combination, I think you might be better served with a quality uh, folding bladed knife or fine tools and a small axe or a hatchet than you would be with one single um, small or medium blade sized fixed blade knife. That's just my personal opinion, given the situation you might be in. If you have to move a lot, and if you don't uh, plan on making shelter or making tools in a way, kind of a semi-permanent way with a tool like this, then you're probably good to go. But if you're gonna be wanting to build shelter, wanting to manufacture tools and things, I think you're definitely better served by a tool like the Grand Forts Brooks small forest axe, then a, even a large fixed blade chopping knife. So I just got done filming a little section, working with my Grand Forth Brooks small forest axe, taking off 
one of those protruding knots that was coming from this side of the log. And I figured I better give you some information on why I was doing that. I transported this log along with a couple others to my home and I've been using them as workout uh, tools. It's a poor man's way of membership to a gym, a couple logs. And I'm all for bench pressing and using barbells and all those kinds of things, but right now I don't have the money for a membership and so I'm trying to be doing some anaerobic and aerobic exercises along with some practical exercises or things I might actually do in the real world. And so this is a log that's about five feet long, you can see there, and it's good sized. And the reason I was taking the knots off here is because it was forcing divots into my lawn right now. The snow is just starting to melt and the ground is wet. And so those knots were being driven into the ground and they were also somewhat clumsy to grab. So I just kind of forced this log, you can see it there. It's a pretty good sized log, close to five feet tall. And I'm just flipping that end over end, lifting like this end up, lifting it up and pushing it over the length of my yard and back a couple times. Here's another smaller log. That's about a three foot log, which I've been doing the same thing with. It gives me just an opportunity for something a little bit lighter. Then here's a smaller log that I've been running with. So I don't know if that's helpful. Maybe I'm just showing how crazy I am, but that's why I was removing that knot. And I figured, hey, if I'm gonna do it, I might as well film it, give you guys a little update there on the Grand Forest Brooks Small Forest Axe.